people's relationship with cocktails is very akin to their relationship to the church. Aviation is like Brussels sprouts. Because that's how my dad taught me how to make it. I'm sorry, sir. Your dad's an idiot. Right, oh my God, so I got so many opinions. I just wonder if I'm going to come off like a complete <laughs> in this video. <laughs> cocktails have been around for a very long time, and a lot of them ended up becoming what we know as classics. Super popular cocktails that have kind of stood the test of time. But some of these are definitely overrated and get way too much love and attention. And some of them are definitely underrated and don't get the love that they deserve. Well, my friend Leandro from The Educated Barfly helped me out and we went through a bunch of different classic cocktails and talking about if they were overrated or underrated. Leandro has been a huge inspiration for my channel. So it was an incredible experience to get to sit down with him for this genuinely hilarious conversation about cocktails. Uh, so sit back, grab yourself a cocktail and enjoy this one. All right, so all of these suggestions were actually uh, like, I want to say like 90% of them, I just pulled from an Instagram, uh, like question box that I put up on my story and a ton of people, uh, put these there. So I want it looks easy and then we'll move it. We'll move it on. So the first one is old fashioned. Is it overrated or underrated? I think that old fashions that are done the proper way are very underrated cocktail. I, they did have their moment a few years ago. They are... To me, everyone says like the kind of test for bartenders and them knowing that what they're doing is a daiquiri. I think that the test for bartenders knowing what they're doing is an old fashioned because it's an incredibly sing simple drink. It's really easy to screw it up. There's a lot of misconceptions around it. So like people think they know what they're doing and talking about. There's also yep. like a whole split between like, do you do it with sugar? Do you do it with simple syrup? And there's a lot of different ways that you can get it well done. And there's a lot of different ways that you can get it really messed up. And having a very good old fashioned is uh, a sublime drink that I don't think enough people really understand the craftsmanship and the skill that goes into making a drink like that because they just think it's something that's thrown together. Absolutely. And I think uh, I 100% agree. I think it's definitely underrated when done well. Uh, I had you know, the first one I ever made, I was, I was at a, uh, a chain restaurant bar. I was working at an Uno's. Uh, and the guy who taught me how to make an old fashioned was like, yeah, so you grab this, you know, you grab your uh, orange slice here, grab this, you know, maraschino cherry, you're going to mull this all up. We're going to add some Jim Beam in there and then a little bit of soda water. And I was like, okay, yeah, I tasted it. I was like, this is, this is not very good. Fast forward a couple of years, I got trained by this guy who like actually started to really teach me how to make craft cocktails. First time I ever had like a real old fashioned blew my mind. I was like, this is, right. this is not the same cocktail. But yeah, definitely underrated if done correctly. I'm with you on that one. A more controversial one in aviation. So many people tell me they despise this cocktail, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Well, an aviation is really, the success of that cocktail is completely dependent upon its build. And the question is this, the question is this, right? The, the aviation is technically a daisy, all right? It is a cocktail that gets its sugar content from a liqueur. Violette liqueur is incredibly dry. It's low in sugar. And so you don't have a lot that's balancing out the lemon juice. And so the question is, how do you build this drink? Do you build it like a sour where you add in a little half an ounce of simple syrup to really get you that balance? And then also add in the liqueur. You add in enough sugar to really balance it out uh, or not. I think that well-made aviations are an incredibly underrated cocktail as well. Um, but I will say that, you know, Violette is a controversial liqueur and not everybody likes it but my whole thing is like i didn't like a negroni when i first had a negroni i almost spit it out because i was just not used to campari but once you acquire the taste for something like campari it's like mind-blowingly good the question is well if you don't like it to begin with why are you acquiring the taste for it is it like peer pressure or whatever like for me it's like understanding cocktails and at the point this many years into my career I've acquired the taste for everything. And not only that, but I think that my palate is sensitive enough and, 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 and complicated enough that I think that complex flavors are something that I can pull apart because I've just practiced at it. And, but it's something like, uh, it's like what my pediatrician said about my kids when they were really little. Uh, they said, or their pediatrician, I guess, for that matter, they, he always said, uh, kids don't know if they like something until they've tasted it 17 times. Because you you have to acquire a taste for a lot of stuff like avocado, zucchini, Brussels sprouts. These aren't things that pe that kids like immediately. They're complex flavors that don't make sense to them, and they their brain needs to be able to make sense of it before they like it. Awesome. So basically, what we're saying is that an aviation is like Brussels sprouts. I hear you. I got you. That makes yes, sense. like just like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> kind of pulling on a thread that you said. So talked about Negronis. Let's talk mm -hmm. about Negronis. 
overrated or underrated at this point in 2023? Man. Oh, God, that's such a hard. Here, here's the thing. I don't know. Uh, I love Negronis. And what I love about Negronis is that they're so customizable because all of the ingredients are proprietary blends of herbs, right? So, and so every vermouth is different. Every gin is different. Every red, uh, red aperitif liqueur is different, right? They differ in sugar. They differ in botanicals. They differ in, uh, you know, dryness and bitterness. I got to say, though, that some stuff that's going on with the Negroni these days is like, I just got to roll my eyes. And I, like, here's the thing. I understand why the sushi rice Negroni happened. I understand. Oh, yes, they're going to take the starch from the from the uh, the rice and they're going to use that to tamp down on the bitter and ethanol flavors of the drink. And it's like, but you're now taking the soul out of this drink and putting training wheels on it. What's the point of that? Is it, be, are you just trying to make, like, it, it, it's, it's like the Parmesan fucking espresso martini, dude. Like, I don't know if I should go public for how much I detest that became a trend, but that right there is like, yeah. I mean, that's the internet we have. All right? I was about to say, it's, it's the <laughs> it's expression like, of the internet culture that we have today, especially as it surrounds cocktails. I was so confused about the sushi rice Negroni. I was just like, I, I can, like you said, yeah, I, I understand that there is a reason why they were doing it, but I just conceptually, I'm just like, that's what's so the point? What's the point? Exactly. That's the question. What's the point of, of, okay, fine. You figured out a way to put training wheels on a Negroni, but other than it just like mellowing the flavors, it doesn't add anything else to the drink. So other than like a, it makes it very murky. What's the point? I don't get it. I want my Negronis to taste like a Negroni. So I don't know if the drink itself is is underrated, or is overrated. I think certain Negroni builds are overrated. You know, I think like all these crazy builds, like I just put three quarters of an ounce or punch being like, we tapped the, you know, six same bartenders that we tapped for every article to figure out which is the best Negroni. I think that shit's a little overrated, but I don't know if the drink itself is. I think that we, we've seen a pretty thorough line here of like, if it's made well, it's not, it shouldn't be overrated. But one that I personally, and I'll die on this hill, that I think is 100% overrated is the classic way to make a mojito where you're muddling the mint right into the cocktail. People can fight me on it. I think. That oh, a dude, mojito, don't get, I ha dude, seriously, I want to make a mojito fucking variation called a trigger warning because the way that I, the way that I make a mojito triggers everybody on the internet all right well so so how do you how do you do it just out oh. of curiosity. oh my god okay so first of all i use i use i use basically like if it's a small lime i'll use the entire lime if it's a larger lime i'll use half a lime but it's about six wedges of lime okay i use one sugar cube plus half an ounce of simple syrup i put the mint on the bottom and i make sure that all the limes are skin face down so that when i muddle the skin of the lime expresses the oil and presses the mint, but you're not getting those vegetal flavors. You're not like over pressing the mint. Basically we do a sugar cube and a half an ounce of simple syrup. The simple syrup immediately starts to balance the lime, but the sugar in it is on a time release. So what you do is you get something that's a little bit sweeter and you get something that's a little bit stiffer on the front end and it evolves as you drink. As the ice melts, as you swirl it in the glass, it evolves a bit so that you have some, you have an evolution in the glass so that it's not like overly sweet up front, or you don't have like a boring thing that just stays one note the, the whole time. And I don't use any soda water, which really pisses people off. And I'll tell you why. Because Louis, ask, just answer me this question. Why do we add effervescent, not effervescent, let's just say, why do we add soda water at cocktails? Why are we doing it? Um, outside what does of soda water do? In a outside cocktail? of extra dilution and maybe just fun bubbles while you're drinking it it's well first of all you put fucking one ounce all right of soda water on top of a cocktail that's denser on the bottle than at bottom than it is on the top first of all that soda water sitting at the top of the cup secondly you're not tasting any effervescence in the drink whatsoever and thirdly the reason why we add soda water is to lengthen flavors and what lengthening flavors does is it spreads the flavor profile out and it makes uh, a more complex flavor is easier to understand for your brain. Because if you have whiskey, the reason why you add water to whiskey is because you want to spread those. If it's a very condensed flavor, your brain's not going to be able to pick out the nuances. You add a little water to it. It opens up the whiskey. It adds a little length to it. That's why for me, dude, 
take a fucking $400 bottle of scotch and add three ounces of water to it. And you'll understand it more than drinking it neat. The people who say you got to drink those spirits neat, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about at all. So in the mojito, the whole point of the drink is to be intensely lime and mint flavored to the point. That's not, that's why we're not adding complex rum to it. We're adding light rum to it. And what is light rum? Light rum with maybe a little bit of aging, like a Havana Club three year. It has a live flavor profile. It's mainly lost in the citrus. You're adding alcohol to something that you want to be intensely lime and mint flavored. So why would I accentuate the, uh, why, why would I lengthen, sorry, why would I lengthen those flavors to make those dumb them down and to make them less intense? I wouldn't want to do that. Put a pinch of salt in it and then you can intensify the flavors and really, you can, especially the, 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 the lime uh, oil will really intensify with a pinch of salt. Put a pinch of salt in it, all right? Whip shake it with some pebble ice. Dump everything into the glass. Add pebble ice on top and garnish with a mint sprig that you slappy put in your crushy pants. That's how I make a mojito. So safe to say the traditional way, overrated. Dude, if you go to fucking, here's the thing. If you go to Cuba, Half the bars make it with soda water and half don't. And sometimes what they do, sometimes what they do, if you watch Mojito, the best Mojito in fucking Havana being made, it, you know, people watch a lot of videos on YouTube. What you'll see is that they take their mint and they take granulated cane sugar. You want to use cane sugar, even if it's processed cane sugar, you want to use cane sugar because what most people don't understand is like domino sugar. Uh, is made out of sugar beets a lot of the time. It's not just cane sugar. It's not actually cane at all. So you use cane sugar, but they'll use like unprocessed cane sugar or lightly processed cane sugar, put it in there. And then they put water in there that is mixed with lime together. It's like a water lime mixture that they drop in. They put about an ounce and a half in there. And what that does is it lengthens the flavor of the lime to make it less intense, but then it also like helps you to dilute that sugar. And so they're not actually putting soda in it 50% of the time. And then 50% of the time they do because it's expected. Awesome. That's great. That's great insight. I didn't even know. Now I'm going to have to try the, your, your method and your recipe because I'm super curious now. Like I really need to. Need no, to what we got to do is we got to get fucking Havana Club to sponsor us. You and I got to go down to Cuba. We got to drink every mojito on the island, crown the winner and show people how to do it right. Havana, if you're watching this, we already have a golden idea. Just get in contact. We'll make this happen. We got yeah, this. all you got to do is fly us down and put us up. We'll do the video for free on That's two it. platforms. All right, let's go. I love it. All right, uh, let's move on to another one that I, and this is going to get a little controversial because I'm getting married in Italy in like four weeks. And okay. I, just, I just, congratulations. Thank you very much. I just paid for us to have, for one of the parties that we're throwing, um, an entire keg of this cocktail. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you that I think it's slightly overrated. Uh, for all spritz. Oh, 100% overrated. And not only that, but when I went to Italy last summer, every place has a spritz menu, right? Yeah. And there's so many different spritzes that you can have. You know, uh, some are Italian spritzes, some aren't. There's this place, uh, Anja, uh, Anateca da uh, Angelina Dal 1860 in Rome. I don't know where you're going to be. I'll be uh, in Rome. They have an amazing selection of just like vintage spirits. I bought like a 1990s era Havana Club three year for like 30 euro. You can buy all these vintage spirits. But what they also do is make incredible seasonal spritzes with all different Amaros. All the, there's a bunch of Amari from Rome itself and uh, they'll taste you on anything. It's this really small little cafe. Uh, the woman that's running it is like fifth generation of her family has been running this in Rome. So I love a spritz, but an Aperol spritz, it's like, I don't know. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I think it's severely overrated. Yeah. A Bloody Mary. Overrated or underrated? Underrated, but I hate it. Uh, I hate that drink with a passion. <laughs> Not only that, but what's crazy about it is that usually when you're serving a Bloody Mary in a bar, we, we pre-made our Bloody Mary mix, our proprietary Bloody Mary mix. And it's really just a matter of building everything in a glass and rolling it. It's really not hard to, to put together. I think that the Bloody Mary has undergone a Frankenstein style process where people have really gone uh, all in on the garnishes of this drink. The drink has suffered because they make really crappy, watered down, terrible Bloody Marys with like a burger on it and a whole, you know, roasted chicken and you know what I'm saying? All sorts of crazies, pickled things. 
Um, and a really well-made Bloody Mary is very difficult to find. And it's a thing of beauty. I, I got to say, though, that I do like it with gin a little bit more than vodka. You have like a really well-made mix. It's a thing of beauty, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I'm, I'm with you on that. Okay, this one I actually think is super underrated, the pina colada. Is the pina colada underrated? I kind of feel like everybody loves a pina colada. Well, if, again, along the same lines is that I think that it, it's also hard, right? Because who are we talking, like what audience are we talking to? Because if it's like a general person, they're just gonna, if you have that kind of pina colada where it's like, hey, it's a Oasis mix in an Oasis machine with like some some random crappy rum. I, I'm thinking more along the lines of like, if you make your own coconut cream and you do fresh pineapple juice, right. I love pina colada. I think that there's like, I think it's such an incredible cocktail if done the right, right way. And I guess maybe just not enough people do it the right way because they get so, maybe it's just around me and like I never see a good one on a menu any anywhere that I've been around here. It could just be a, a New England thing. But I think when done well, a pina colada is a thing of beauty. Yeah, I mean, I think that, okay, the, over the years, the pina colada has suffered. It really has suffered. And, and I think that the death knell for the pina colada is that there's no, like in the original, there's no acid. And mm -hmm. that is a big problem. Especially because when you take like Coco Lopez and you mix that with pineapple juice, it tastes like banana boat suntan lotion. And what you need is you need like a quarter ounce of lime juice in it to really, yeah. to really like give you that back of the back of the palate, like sharpness that you're kind of mm -hmm. looking for and a temper some of the sweetness. Uh, I also think a couple of dashes of Angostura bitters inside the, like you just do it like in the tin or whatever, if you're like rolling it or if you're blending it. Honestly, I think that like, just like as a broader category, I think that, and you'll know this, like if you do this on YouTube or whatever, you look at the numbers, you'll know this by just making a video on it, but just all blender cocktails are underrated nowadays because people think like, oh, there's so many quality cocktails and blender drinks aren't quality cocktails because I went to the ground rounds, you and I are from Massachusetts. I went to the ground round or I went to TGI Fridays and I had like a really bad blender daiquiri or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they just think that it's a, like a terrible thing, but we're in a golden age of just amazing blender drinks right now. Uh, and, and, and like really genius bartenders and hospitality people who are super talented that are putting some real culinary spins on, uh, on these things. Like, uh, I mean, my favorite is Garrett is the Garrett Richard edition of uh, Xanthan gum to it so that it doesn't separate. It doesn't turn to water at the bottom. And it's completely yep. cohesive. Uh, so yes, I think that you're right. But also let's just define something here because there's something about something that you said that kind of irritates me a little bit, okay? There is a controversy on the internet about what coconut cream and cream of coconut is, and I'm just going to set the record straight right now. We're going to, I'm going to define this for you as well, and hopefully you adopt my definition. Certainly will. Coconut milk is the two to one mix of coconut and water. Okay. Coconut cream is the four to one mix of coconut and water. So when you're clarifying stuff with coconut, use coconut cream. There's more fat in it. It's going to clarify a lot better. You won't have to run it through a filter five times. Cream of coconut. All right is supposed to be coconut cream that has added sugar to it. And Coco Lopez were, was the, the company, I'm pretty sure, that coined this phrase. If you say coco coconut cream on your channel, everybody's going to say it's cream of coconut. Yep. But honestly, cream of coconut and coconut cream is a stupid distinction. Coconut co cream of coconut, it doesn't fucking mean anything. So from now on, I think we should call it coconut syrup. Or I coconut cream syrup. I love coconut it. cream syrup. Because then because that's what it is. All right. It's coconut cream with the addition of sugar. It's not cream of coconut. That doesn't inverting the words doesn't make it a new thing. I'm on board. From now on, it's a coconut syrup. Makes it easier I for everyone. I think we I, I think we agree that it's underrated though. I like a, a well-made uh, pina colada something. You're right. 100 percent One more, because I find this one to be controversial anytime anyone makes a version of this. And there's always people in the comments just shitting on everyone who makes one a paloma do you think it's overrated or underrated i love a paloma i think it's i think certain i think that the original version of the paloma is overrated but i think also the shitting on sorry the shitting on of the paloma 
in co in comments is the same as the shitting on like certain very like very like certain approaches to the mojito because people in the cocktail world suffer from this thing that I call traditionalism. This is the way it was traditionally made. I'm going to ignore any advances in science, culinary science, or anything else, or even just people that have advanced and 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 evolved over time, and I'm just going to do the same thing as the traditional or else it's not a Paloma. And I think that that type of thinking is the death of this industry. Could you imagine going into a Italian restaurant and ordering bolognese and then getting it being like, this isn't bolognese. This isn't bolognese because you only use beef. You didn't use beef and veal. Could you right. fucking imagine right. that? Yeah, like, it's the most insane thing. Yeah, it, 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 it just, it's a real difficult thing for me that people's relationship with cocktails is very akin to their relationship to the church in a sense where like everything has to be just so and it's like oh bourbon manhattans are great because that's how my dad taught me how to make it i'm sorry sir your dad's a fucking idiot he didn't teach you the right way it's not great with bourbon fine if you want to make a bourbon version and that's the way you like it i support you i support you but it's better with rye. And it was originally done with rye. The, like a, we pick the traditional way when it makes sense, but we shouldn't be afraid to sort of upgrade it. And so I don't know if it's like, is it that it's underrated or is it that it's like misunderstood? Like, oh, you can't make that with grapefruit juice, even though it's better drink with grapefruit juice. You can't make it with grapefruit juice using soda because that's not grapefruit soda. So grapefruit juice and soda isn't grapefruit <laughs> soda. You have to use squirt because that's what originally was used exactly yeah i don't oh, want to yeah. use squirt i'd rather use haritos if anything else like <laughs> yeah. oh squirt is not good i don't like it it's, it's not good so gross well there you have it i hope you really enjoyed this episode i really had a lot of fun filming it and then editing it i've been laughing my ass off all week editing this video but if you can't get enough of classic cocktails i have a whole other video that you can watch right here next where i go through every single classic cocktail cheers